So I'm going to interrupt that uh, Garnet Silk, Mama Africa. And, and it's funny, there are lots of artists singing about Africa, but they're using the word Mama. Of course, Mama Africa is the cradle of civilization from which all nations came. You better believe that. All right, on the line right now, I have uh, Miss Constance Graham. Good evening, Constance. How are you? I'm okay, Sharon. How are you? Okay. All right. Thank you. First of all, let me say thank you very much um, because I know until someone is actually going through what you have gone through, no one can feel the pain that you are feeling right now. Of course, uh, Constance Graham goes by the name of Little Miss, as uh, the family calls her, is the mother of Ramali Graham. And uh, for those who haven't heard or have been living under a rock, uh, Ramali Graham was the young teen, 18 years old, who was murdered by Richard Hasty on, uh, was it February the 4th? February the 2nd. February the 2nd in his home, in his bathroom, in front of his grandmother and um, six-year-old brother. I'm sorry to bring up these memories again, Constance, but just to give background information for people who may not have heard. All right, so um, fast forward. Um, Richard Hasty, um, a, a grand jury was convened and uh, a trial was started where Richard Hasty was charged, not with murder, um, but it was, what was the charge? Manslaughter 1 and 2. Manslaughter 1 and 2. And the trial is progressing. Various court dates are taking place. And the community and the family are at the front and center of galvanizing and getting people to support. Um, first of all, to, to get Richard Hasty charged. Uh, right? Because I, I read something very interesting. Of all the police shootings of unarmed teens, um, Ramali's case is the only one to date where a police officer has been indicted. Is that true? Yes. Um, ever since Sean Bell, Romali was the only one since then, you know, was indicted. Um, Richard Hayes was indicted um, for manslaughter one and manslaughter two due to the fact how we was out there and the videotape proved, shown, you know, what went on that leading up to the incident. Right. Because, um, you know, thank you also for your page, um, Constance. Uh, it kind of reminds us because I remember when the story first broke, uh, all sorts of wild allegations were being put out there as fact that Ramali yeah. was a drug dealer, that Ramali had a gun, that Ramali was selling weed on White Plains Road. But really and truly, this was um, a tragic case that came about as part of a bigger harassment I'm talking about the stop and frisk of the youth in communities of color. Now, um, I know it's still very, very painful for you because I tell you what, Constance, I saw that video clip uh, when the verdict came down from the judge. Tell us what happened and how you felt when you heard that, that judgment recently. I, I, as a mother, I couldn't sit there any longer and listen to the judge, what he had to say, because for the whole year and change that we've been rallying and you know protesting i've been calm and i hold i held everything in and to see this judge was going to let this man walk out of the court again and said okay you're going to go free you don't have you, you're free again to go out there I, I i had to let him see the pain i was feeling and what i was going through i didn't want him to come outside laughing again like they did at the raymond when he, he got that fifty thousand dollar bill mm -hmm. and he came outside laughing mm -hmm. And his fellow officers out there Clapping, applauding him applauding for him, murdering yeah. my son, which mm -hmm. didn't do anything. All he was guilty of is walking on white face road and being a black boy. That's all it was. He wasn't selling any drugs. He wasn't running from anybody. He didn't. He didn't fight with the police. None of that stuff. None. Of all the other stuff you hear, the media was putting out. The video shows. Hmm. The video showed. I wonder they show how a person running. That wasn't even my son. The person look running the person was wearing running a white shirt. And look at my son's clothes. How could you run and change your clothes at the same time? Absolutely. But, you know, I guess they think that we're all stupid, Constance, because the person yeah. who was running was clearly mm. not Ramali, because Ramali yeah. walks up to his house. It's not as though anyone was chasing him. He mm -hmm. looks back as though somebody calls him, and he mm -hmm. goes calmly into his house. You then see the police officers running up with guns drawn. Mm -hmm. 
and the kicking, the frantic kicking at the door. Hasty wanted to get in for whatever reason, but there's a there's a quite a period of time that elapses. They go round to the back of the house and they have barge in. Minutes, it was over know, five minutes, back, right? Which they didn't. Right. They went through the back door. It, it's funny because they went through one door. They stuck the gun in the, the tenant place on the first floor. Went through that door, came to the tenant the, the front door of the tenant house, and opened that door and came out in the hallway. Opened the front door where he saw he was kicking, and mm -hmm. let the other cops come in, and they ran up the steps. So they had 40 minutes, 45 minutes outside to, to, you know, to step back and say, listen, we're doing something wrong. This is not but no, they went anymore. around the back, got in, and then came up a flight of steps again and kicked another door open. And what makes me so anger, a lot of angry, you know, because he sat there in court and said he feared for his life. How could you fear for your life when you put yourself in that danger when you don't even know if he had a gun because that's what they you claim they told you. Mm, so why are you chasing someone into a house if they have a gun? Exactly. You don't know what's in there. You don't know who's in there waiting for you. Exactly. Hmm. Constance, um, we just want to give you the encouragement because we know that you and Romali's father, Uncle Frank, Frank mm -hmm. Graham, have really kind of... Uh, been thrust to, into a role that we we hope that no mother and father would be thrust into but you seem to be um, pivotal to the families who are going through the same thing that you're going through where do you get your strength from I, I, I think it's from where I'm from I'm from Jamaica and as a lot of people know I, I, I came here I was 13 years old but I never forgot where I'm from so for me being as what they call it a ghetto I, we had to fend for ourselves. So I know with this, I have to be out there and I have to let people know I'm not a weak person. My son don't have a voice. And because of me, he's going to have a voice because they're going to hear my voice. I'm going to speak for him. And I will never give up this fight for my son. I love my son and I'll always love my son. And all these other young men out there, they became my son. And this is who I'm fighting for. And I'm not going to give up until this man go to jail. till he be held accountable for what he did to my son. Because he didn't just kill Romali, he killed a whole community. So you're hearing, uh, if you're just logged in and listening to the voice you're hearing right now, is um, the pain-tinged voice of Constance, uh, Romali Graham's mother. Constance Malcolm, I mean, your fortitude and your grace, because I'm telling you, I don't know if I could have sat court date after court date after court date, the hassle, the harassment that you and your supporters and community members have to go through just to get into the courtroom, uh, because I know they do everything to deter you, and you plug away and you plug away. As you said, you are now the voice of your son because his voice has been silenced by Richard Haste. I say he was murdered by Richard Haste, but um, what's going on now with the, with the, um, with the DA's office? You say yeah. that the judge... I want to let people know that yes, this please. case is not over. A lot of people have been coming up to, oh, they threw out this and, you know, it's finished. No, it's not finished. It's a technicality. Even though it's a technicality, you know, I'm going to go back a little bit because a lot of people go to prison on technicality. Hmm. But for some reason, when it comes to the cop, hmm. they always find some way of going around it to find stuff to throw a case out. But this is not finished. What happened is they found, um, they're saying the, the DA didn't tell the jury that the, uh, Richard Hayes was relying on the, the other officer that radio and said that, that they, they thought Romali had a gun. They saw Romali with a gun. So this is where the technicality comes in. But so I, it's not over. They, the judge didn't say the evidence is not there. He didn't mm -hmm. say that. The evidence is there. It's just the way how they presented the case to the grand jury. Mm -hmm. So now we have two choices. We could appeal it and wait, or we, we could go back into the grand jury. What I want is to go back in the grand jury because we got an indictment the first time. They, right. they, believe, they believe all the evidence the first time. So mm -hmm. nothing has changed. Mm -hmm. So if we go back in the grand jury, we should be able to get another second indictment. Right. I know that people think that Robert Johnson's office, this DA, um, is, as, as Frank said, the DA and the NYPD work very closely together. How can the Fox then be left to guard the hen house? 
So, so that's what it is. We as people have to make them. They work for us. So we have to show them as a community, as a New York citizen, people that live in New York, that we, we are watching you. We are watching you. We're not going to let this one roll. Now, so I, that's why we need the support of the community to come out and let our voice be heard. Like I said, it's, this is not just for my son. This is for all my son that's out there that, you know, potentially could happen to again. Right. We know that there was a, a rally um, recently. Well, actually, this past Saturday um, yeah. that started at your home and members of the community were out there to support the, the, the news that the case had been dismissed. Uh, it doesn't mean it's the end of the case because there are options, as you explained. Now, I, w I was there because when I can, I am supporting the Graham and, and family because my yes. daughter went to school with Romali. This is on my doorstep. This is in my neighborhood. This could have happened to any child, and it is happening to our children. Uh, Romali's case is not the only case. I think there have been 19, 19 killings of teens or something actually, like that. Actually, over 20, over 24, I think. Over 24. And actually, um, the, the young man, the 16-year-old youth from Brooklyn who was Kamani gunned Gray. down, Kamani Gray, his mother was actually at the rally on Saturday. Um, and yeah. it was heartbreaking to see her break down at that time because it's a mother's grief at losing a child and under such tragic circumstances nobody can feel that pain until you go through it yeah and for her and to be there trying to you know show people we don't we don't want to welcome you to that club we don't want this to happen to you we don't want you in that club this, this club is not a nice club this is a club i wouldn't want anybody to come in you can hear the pain in Constance's voice as she picks up the banner, picks up the mantle, and picks up the fight for her son, Ramali Graham. He's um, buried at Woodlawn Cemetery, and in the demonstration, in the rally that took place, I uh, started off from their house in the Bronx, 229th Street. Um, Frank Romali's father was saying, you know, it's very, very hard because it's not just the family that feels it. It's the whole community. It's this stain on the community. You see the police officers and you wonder, is it my turn? Because it could happen. Uh, we're, we're being policed in, in a climate where it seems to be okay for a police officer to gun down an unarmed youth. And it's okay that nothing comes out of it, but not this time. That's right. Not this time because we're going to push and we're going to make sure, even if we have to use him to set an example out of him, that's what we have to do and tell, let them know NYPD is not above the law. There is law you have to follow along with everybody else. Absolutely. I know um, nothing will bring Ramali back. And I know you yeah. recently had a birthday. I know Mother's Day was last Sunday. I know these are two very painful um, events for you. Uh, Constance, what is your wish? How do you want your son's life and death to change, to make a change in the community? What my wish is to see, you know, this doesn't happen. I don't want another mother be in the same shoes as me because, like I said, it's not, it's not a good feeling, it, and the pain will never go away. No matter, no, everybody feels different pain. Every mother feels a different pain. And I don't want nobody in the situation where we are because I can't even explain it. I can't even explain it, but I just want, I, I, I want to see this case at least come where we could go to court and so we have our day in court. Let us have our day in court, not just that a judge say, okay, we're going to dismiss it on a technicality. No, let us get, up, get, get us in the court at least because, as you see, this was the first indictment. Since you know, Sean all Bell. the cases that was going on over the summer, um, since January till now. This was the only case that I had an indictment. So everybody was looking at the case like, yes, you know, um, we're going to see justice. Mm. And that's all I'm asking for. Just give me the justice that my son deserves. Mm. Let him look, look up and, you know, and, and say, well, my mom fought for me hard to get this. And that's what I'm going to do because I'm a mom. I love all my kids. And I'm going to fight to the end. There's nothing going to stop me. Like Frank said, he'll have to kill me too before I stop. Absolutely. And you know, um, Constance, I feel that even though people will say, why does God let these things happen? 
um, in you and Frank, um, you're able to galvanize the community. And I, I know you feel disappointed at the level of support that comes from the community, but I feel part of the problem is that people don't know what's going on. So I'm hoping that you know the, the media uh, outlets, radio stations, news outlets, especially in communities of color, will spread the news that whenever you make the call, that there's a rally, there's a demonstration, we need you to come to the courthouse to support, that people will actually take up that call and, and support. As you put on your Facebook page, you know, if it was a dance, if it was a party, the place would have been ran. And it's really a sad indictment on our community that we can sit and fold our hands. But as I wrote, today for me, tomorrow for you. And, 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 I, and I, I'm, I am kind of disappointed in my people, you know, and I say my people, not the Caribbean people. I understand their situation and I understand that. But when we go protest and we go walk, since this whole year, nobody has been arrested because we do it in a in a, a decent manner because that's who we are. We don't want to show them and give them the, the reason say, oh, look at this. See, I told you it was animal. We're not going to give them that because we could be decent. We are decent people. Absolutely. And we have.